Hey guys, welcome back. This is the long-awaited sequel to my video and introduction to liminal witchcraft. So today we're going to be talking all about one of my absolute favourite things, liminal spaces. But more specifically, what we're talking about today is how to find liminal spaces, what liminal spaces are, examples of liminal spaces. I've recently done a workshop on liminal witchcraft and lots of people didn't know a lot of what liminal spaces were, which I found quite interesting because I find it quite easy to work out what they are, but it seems that a lot of people are quite surprised by what some examples of liminal spaces can be. So this is going to be an easy guide to help you work out what liminal spaces are. Based on the examples we're using in this video, you will be able to go out and find them yourself and you will be confident in being able to deduct that they are liminal spaces. So liminal spaces are spaces, containers, both physical and non-physical, places of transition, places that are boundaries between other spaces, transitionary periods and locations, spaces where energy is more potent, weird high strangeness related things happen, and you're more exposed to unexplained phenomena. If you're a witch or spiritual in any way, you will find that you work within liminal spaces quite a lot, even if you're not aware of it. They are boundaries of untapped power. Most people, even if they're not magically or cunningly inclined, will work with liminal spaces in their day-to-day -day life because a lot of these spaces are not super conventional. They're not stereotypically magical or paranormal. And that's the whole point of what we're talking about today. We're going to go over some of the more non-conventional liminal spaces. Because sure, we all know places like cemeteries are liminal. We know the rivers are liminal. We know the beaches are liminal. But there are lots of examples of liminal spaces that might not just pop into your head and you would be really surprised at how many examples there truly are. So let's jump into some of these examples to give you a much better education on the wonderful world of liminality. The first non-conventional type of liminal space I love to tell people about is teenagehood or puberty. It is the time when you transition from being a child to an adult. Teenage years are a very, very tough and emotional time. You've got raging hormones, you fall in love with everything and anyone, you're angry all the time, you're withdrawn, you feel depressed. And look, I'm not trying to discredit any of those feelings because teenager was a nightmare for me. I know how it feels. But everything is at a heightened state during puberty and your teenage years. From people that I've spoken to as well, I've found that lots of their weird experiences, UFO encounters or fairy encounters or paranormal things have happened when they were teenagers. And this is because we're susceptible to a lot of things during our teenage years because we're already going through a liminal time, regardless of where we are, if we're in a physical liminal space or not, teenagehood is liminality. Remember, liminality is all about transition, thresholds, and boundaries. And the whole point of puberty and teenagehood is it is a transition from being a child to an adult. Another great example, or rather three great examples, are pregnancy, childbirth, and menopause. These are incredibly potent times. During pregnancy, your body is changing rapidly and in such an intense way for nine whole days months you're growing a child like you're you're literally from a single tiny microscopic egg you're growing a fully fledged person anyone who's been through pregnancy knows how tumultuous of a time it truly can be even if you have the most relaxing pregnancy ever it's still pretty intense but the whole thing is a transition it is a threshold you are going from being a young maiden into a mother and so moving on from pregnancy, you then have childbirth. In my opinion, one of the most liminal acts a human being can perform. Childbirth is literally the boundary between existence and non-existence. Sure, the child has been growing in the stomach for those nine months, but it is not a fully fledged human being until it is out into the world, until you hear that first cry, until it comes out into the light. The whole act of childbirth itself is so incredibly potent and filled with magic there's still so much about it that just transcends science and transcends anything we know about being human whether it takes you know 
eight hours or it takes 72. The whole process of childbirth is liminal. It is a transition between being in the womb and being alive as a human on the planet in the conventional way that we know. Pregnancy and childbirth, you will find people who are currently going through that point in their life, they are more susceptible to things. Just as one example, when I was pregnant, I saw auras, I could read auras, but as soon as I wasn't pregnant anymore, bam, gone. Could, couldn't read auras in the same way. I can pick up on them a little bit, but not in the same way I could during the pregnancy. And I'm not the only one. There are so many women who pick up psi-related abilities during their pregnancy. There are so many women who, when they are pregnant, they see ghosts or apparitions, or they experience strange phenomena. And this is because you're in a liminal state, you're more susceptible to these things. And menopause is the time when your ability to have children starts to wane and eventually it disappears. During menopause, our eggs run out. We don't have any more and we can't have kids anymore at that point. Lots of people get scared of the concept of menopause and I used to be super scared of it for a long time. But honestly, I think it's a beautiful time when the woman's body can rest a bit but it is also a transition. You are going from being fertile and being able to produce life to no longer having that ability anymore. And this does not mean that by the time you end menopause, you are no longer susceptible to magic and you're no longer able to create magic. It just means you're viewing life and experiencing life in a different way. Those are three stages of a woman's life that are incredibly liminal and an incredible time for potent liminal magic. Altered states of consciousness are another big one for liminality. I mean all sorts of things here. I mean being under the influence of things. I mean meditation. I mean visiting the Akashic Records and the astral realms. You know, whatever you want to call it. Any form of altered state of consciousness is a temporary state you find yourself in. Being under the influence never lasts forever. Even if it's a really long time, it eventually is going to come to an end which is why it is liminal. And as we know, so many stories you hear from people who have taken DMT or psilocybin mushrooms, you hear some crazy stories about them seeing fairies or goblins or pink elephants, you know, all that crazy stuff. And this is because you're in a liminal state of being. You're in an altered state of consciousness where you are more susceptible to the strange phenomena. And just as a disclaimer, I am in no way saying go out and get yourself into these altered states because there are other ways you can do it without being silly. <laughs> but for those of us who don't really want to go down that variation of altered state of consciousness, you also have meditation and visiting the Akashic realms or the astral realms. Meditation puts us in this weird state where we're not asleep. We're awake, but we're awake using a different part of our brain and everything just sort of gets muddled. The physical reality and the metaphysical reality merge together and blend and sort of become one while also sort of staying opposed. And this is why lots of people, when they're meditating, they enter different brainwaves and different parts of their consciousness where they are able to commune with entities, talk to aliens, visit different realms and meet different beings. I've met quite a few beings during meditation by this point. I visited the Akashic Records and the whole place feels liminal. Every single meditative experience I've had personally has a liminal vibe to it. it it's a thin place through and through. So entryways and doorways are by definition a boundary. They are a threshold. They are the beginning of your house, whether it be your back door or your front door or even just a door into different rooms. They are the crossing between. You'll find lots of people use entryways and doorways within their craft because of how potent the liminal energy is within them. And entryways and doorways are one of those ones you can easily create or find. So if you can't get out to a physical liminal space far away, you can do this work within the boundaries of your house. You can sit in an entryway or literally in the door frame because that is the doorway and you can do your liminal work there. Entryways and doorways come in so many different variations as well so they're not always going to be obvious. Yeah it can be your bedroom door or it can be your front door but think a little bit outside of the box too. Look at some of these examples.
Moving on to another favorite, but this needs explaining because I never explain it properly, forests. You know, there's an argument I always say forests are liminal just because I love them so much, but every time I step into the lush green of the spruces or the, any other conifers or the oaks or the yews or whatever forest I am in, I always get the sense that I am being watched or there's elemental power there or there are fairies or there are other beings lurking and not necessarily in a malevolent way either they are just existing in their natural space i always get that liminal feel when i'm in forests and i think a lot of what makes forests feel so liminal especially in this modern age is the fact that they are usually situated between cities and towns so i find that all forests whether they're ancient whether they're commercial whatever type of forest it is always feels like a boundary or a threshold between the modern world they are the last bastions of the natural world that we have sure you have like mountains and beaches and fields and they're very liminal too but there's something about the energy of forests that really makes me think damn i'm in a liminal space the whole forest feels liminal and then you will find pockets within that forest that feel even thinner I think all forests are liminal, in my personal opinion, but the ones between cities and villages, especially, I think are super, super liminal. My favourite forest in the whole world is a commercial spruce forest, so it's not native to the environment, but it has been here for a while at the bottom of my favourite mountain, and it is right in between two or three semi-rural villages, but right next to that commercial forest literally just over a tiny tiny bit you see them blend almost is a more ancient natural woodland and that that strip i think is incredibly liminal every time i'm there it feels so still so ethereal I think everyone who has even the tiniest little bit of interest in liminality knows that water is in the threshold of thin and liminal spaces but what most people might not know, especially if they're only just dipping their toes, excuse the pun, into liminality, is it's more things like running water that are liminal. The liminality of water goes back years and years, centuries and centuries. Look at the Welsh Otherworld, Anuvan, for example. Most of the entryways into Anuvan are described as being lakes or beneath lakes or crossing rivers. You're telling me our ancestors didn't know a thing or two about liminality? And, you know, going into that just a slight bit more, Anuvan itself, or the very deep, as some people call it, is a liminal realm. It's full of these creatures who are neither alive nor dead, who can go between the worlds. The word liminal will start to sound weird by the end of this video, but bear with me. <laughs> so running water like I mentioned at the start of the video, rivers, streams, springs, even to an extent tap water I would say is liminal, which I know doesn't sound very magical and aesthetic, but liminality is not about aesthetic. It is a place where energy is constantly changing, where the cycle is always moving. Things never stay stagnant in liminal spaces, which is why it is a more potent place or part of your brain or way of being it is a place where things move and they keep moving and so that lends more energy for weirder stuff to happen in places where energy isn't still and it's always changing it's like a highway for spirits for magic for entities to just do their thing i think liminal spaces are really magnets for these entities and beings they're safe havens where they can go and be themselves in as weird of a way as that sounds. Like, look at when people talk about their weird experiences, their paranormal encounters, their high strangeness investigations. Look at where these events happen, where these sightings happen. It's always in places like forests or where there's running water or where they're traveling or someone's pregnant or someone's under the influence of something. All of these connecting stories, all of this high strangeness, all the paranormal aspects, all the rituals, all the witchcraft, it's always around a liminal space where this energy 
is happening, where the energy is more potent, where more unexplained phenomena happens. It's all related, and this is why liminality speaks so deeply to me, because as a witch, I was looking for an avenue where I could blend my love for the paranormal and high strangeness. And liminality blends both aspects of that so perfectly. Another important liminal space that most people forget, and this is one that people do every single day, whether you're magically inclined or not, is travelling. And I don't mean jetting off to Bora Bora or going off to Japan, though they do count. But I mean something as simple as you get up, you get ready, you leave your house and you walk to the shop. Or you're travelling to meet your friends. Whether you're walking, biking, taking your car, getting a bus, getting a plane. The actual physical journey of travelling from point A to B is liminal because it is a transition. The whole thing is transitional, like you're going on a journey which is constantly changing because you don't know what's going to happen two seconds from where you are. The energy of where you were at the start of your journey is going to change halfway through and then it's going to change by the time you get to the end. And people who are just travelling, going for little walks, they are usually susceptible to strange stuff too. And finally, one of the more obvious ones, just to wrap this up, is cemeteries. Now, if you're like me, you're a bit of a cliche and you absolutely love cemeteries. They are the quintessential definition of a liminal space. They are the boundary between life and death, where those alive merge with those who have passed on. They are the resting place for those who came before. And I don't know about you, but any time I go into any cemetery, it's always super still there. It's quiet. It has a whole different presence and the way it feels is just so strange. And strange isn't always a negative term. If something's strange to me, it's usually a good thing. Liminal spaces are transitionary boundaries and thresholds. They are spaces where energy is more potent, more unexplained phenomena happens, and just weird encounters are likely to come to be. When you get started on the path of liminality, it's really important to familiarise yourself with the concept of what liminality actually is. Really understanding that definition of liminality is going to help you so much on your journey with thin places and liminal witchcraft, magic, whatever you're doing. So whether you're a witch and paranormal and high strangeness enthusiast like myself, or you're just interested in the weird and wonderful in general, Getting to know liminal spaces will help you so much and explain a lot more about what you're looking into. Use the examples I have mentioned here to go and hunt for liminal spaces yourself and to get a better idea of what they are. Go there and feel what they feel like. Understand that signature for liminality. You'll know the energy signature of a liminal space when you're there. And remember, liminal spaces are not always conventional. There's more than meets the eye when it comes to liminal spaces. Sometimes it's super basic, sometimes it's super complicated. Regardless of what type of liminal space you're dealing with, it's always fun and you're always more susceptible to a really interesting experience when you get involved with liminality. As always guys, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe and share this video with anyone you think would be interested. I am Mickey, aka The Liminal Witch, and I'm really looking forward to talking more about liminal spaces and liminality with you soon. Have a lovely day, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.